Welcome back. In this first lesson of our final week, we are going to learn more about how we can develop animations in processing. So far, we have explored the idea that we can redraw our canvas at regular intervals, creating an animation as our shapes move across the canvas. In this lesson, we are going to explore how we can make this happen in our code. In order to understand how we can do this, we first need to understand a little more about functions. We have been using functions since the beginning of this course. Functions represent an existing unit of code that performs a specific task for us. We have used functions to create shapes, such as the rect and ellipse functions. We have used functions to control how our images look, such as the fill and no fill functions. And we have also used functions to control our canvas, such as the rotate and translate functions that we explored last week. In processing and other programming languages, you can also create your own functions. Why would you want to do this? Well, let's think back to the functions we have already used. What do they have in common? The main idea that they have in common is that they represent a task in our program that we want to repeat, perhaps also in multiple programs. Functions allow us to encapsulate that task into a single unit that can be reused over and over again. You can even specialize what happens when you call the function by providing parameter values. You can see examples of this all through your coding. But let's look at one example in more detail. The rect function draws a rectangle on our canvas. How does it know what size to draw? We provide the information that it needs through the parameter values, which provide the detail of the starting x and y coordinate values, as well as the height and width of the rectangle. This information then specializes the call to the rect function so that it does exactly what we need. For another example, Let's look back at the begin shape function that we introduced last week. This function takes a single parameter that tells the begin shape function how to interpret and draw a shape around a set of vertices. Again, specializing the execution of the function to the purpose that we want. The main reason you want to create your own functions is when you have identified a selection of code in your own program that you want to use over and over again. You may even want to reuse the function across lots of your own programs. In order to have our programs run continuously and create animations, we must have two new functions defined in our code. Because the processing environment is expecting these exact functions to exist, we must follow the exact template that is defined here. If we change the name or the structure of the functions, the processing system would not know how to make our animations work. The two functions that are needed in our programs are the setup and draw functions. They look like this. The setup function is used for the task of setting up our canvas. Its task is to do everything that we want to set up our canvas in the right way, such as setting the size of the canvas and the background color. The draw function is responsible for drawing our images and redrawing our images as our animation executes. We'll come back to this one shortly. So what does this code mean? What have we actually created here? What we have done here is create two new functions, one called setup and one called draw. Let's have a look at how the code works. Let's look at the first function more closely. When we create a function, we start by identifying the type of any information that the function might create for us. In this case, we have used the type void, which basically means that no new information is created and returned to us by this function. The next thing that we write is the name of the function. In this case, setup. This is the name that is used to call the function, like rect or begin shape. After this, we have a space within the brackets to define any parameters that will be used within this function. But in the case of these two functions, we don't have any parameters. You can have functions that return different data types and have lots of parameters. 
which you can read more about in the resources section for this week. Within the function, you can include whatever code you want to be executed when that function is called. Remember that the task the setup function is doing is to set our canvas up as we want it to look. The processing environment knows to call this function, if we have defined it in our programs, at the start of our program execution. It's important to note that the setup function will only be called once. So, if we wanted to create a canvas of size 400 pixels by 400 pixels with a red background and a fill color of white, we could do this by including the right code in our setup function, like so. Any programs in processing that want to be run continuously, such as animations, need to also have a draw function. The draw function is called repeatedly until either the program is stopped or you close the window. Whatever is run in the draw function gets executed over and over again. Each time our draw function is called, it generates a new image, which is known as the frame. If we want to create an animation, we have to change the elements of our image slightly in each frame. 